In this section, let's talk about aux bus output and what we can do with certain switcher outputs and the aux bus together. Let's first go to the switcher output menu, ENG setup, switcher, output. I do have programmable outputs. They can be internal switcher inputs or re-entries of MEs, and they can also be auxes. You can see here I have output 21 is aux 1, 22 is aux 2, 23 is aux 3, and so on. So now I know switcher output 21, when I send it to say a monitor on a set or somewhere else, is fed by my aux 1 bus. So I want to do another feature set though, and that's aux mix. I want to execute an aux mix on aux 1. In order to do that, in order to do a mix, it, the uh, video that I'm going from needs some place to go. So we're going to connect aux 1 and aux 2 together here. When I go to aux mix from here, Say to aux1, aux1 and 2 mix. I'm going to set that. I'm also going to do it for aux3. And I'm going to set aux3 and 4 and hit set. Anytime something's yellow in the menu, has to hit execute in order for it to take place. I'm going to hit execute. So now I've told aux1 and aux2 they're together. When I change a parameter of aux1 or a source in aux1, it's going to, I'll have the choice of doing a mix or a cut. Uh, in that aux. Same with aux 3 and aux 4. So if we go back here, let's go up to my aux panel now. I'm going to put aux 1 um, on program and aux 3 in preview. Right there, that's the outputs. They're switcher outputs. I'm feeding them to monitors. I now can come up to my aux uh, crosspoint pad and I'm going to go to second delegate and second delegate allows me to say, hey, aux 1, you're amber, and I'm feeding you with the top bro bu uh, bus. And aux 3 is green, and I can feed it at the same time. So now I can easily get and uh, route aux 1 and 3 quickly. These are aux mix buttons. So this corresponds to aux mix for aux 1. This corresponds to aux mix for aux 3. You'll see without the aux mix turned on, I can still cut and go back and forth to different sources. On, my, on each one of my auxes. If I turn on aux mix, I can easily then do a mix on aux one, turn on it for, turn the aux mix on for aux three, and do an aux mix there. Let's go and change those trans rates. Those are pretty long mixes. If I go to miscellaneous transition aux mix, the aux one trans rate was set at 30. I'm gonna take that down to 12. I like 12 for trans rates. And then I'm going to do the same thing for aux3. So now you'll see when I route different things to aux1, I have a much quicker transition than aux3 also. Nice thing about this second delegate mode is I can easily route two things at once on that aux and go back and forth. Now I'm going to route the same thing to them because we're going to go talk about what we can do with that output. If I'm feeding um, aux1 and aux3 to separate monitors, in those monitors sometimes I'm going to need color correction. You need to tell that monitor. Every monitor is a little bit different and the settings might be different. So for video, we can have some parameters here that will allow me to um, adjust for each individual monitor. So let's put a still in here where we have of the sunset. We're going to go with uh, frame memory 15 in both right there. And you can see they right at the same time. We're going to go to the aux menu and I have aux bus and you can see color corrector. I have aux one. And now I can say, turn on the color corrector. I'm going to put aux1 in both monitors so we can see it in both places right now. And I can turn on video processing. And you can see now I can actually adjust and take some C gain out or video gain. I have my default recalls right there. So my parameters, I'm not afraid to change a lot of them and see what I got. But maybe it's a really hot monitor. I need to take the video down. That's all I'm doing is adjusting both, right? Aux1's in both monitors right now. Um, I can also, if I were to change a lot of parameters, like hue delay or other things, I can always hit Unity and get myself back for all of them for my default recall. Let's go on this particular one to primary color corrector. And I'm going to take my blacks. And now I have holds for red, green, blue, and all. I'm going to take some of the reds out of my blacks. I'm adjusting the blacks. I'm adjusting the bottom of this still. And you can see there were some reds in that bleeding over into that black and I could take those out. I could even then in the blacks add some blue in and give myself more of a shadowy or, or more of the twilight I might see there. And again, all adjusted to the parameters of the monitor itself. And you can see I've got blues in there. 
The nice thing about this is I can actually store this. Remember my user region, user region five, is, um, is controlling my auxes. That's gonna remember everything, even the parameters of my color corrector. So I can actually come to my 10 keypad and go snapshot user five and store number 21. And I can store those settings. So again, if I were to go to Unity on everywhere on this color corrector and even turn it off, if I recall that snapshot, I'm back to those parameters and set. Very powerful color correctors. I can even go to RGB and choose my whites, blacks, knees, darks. They're very powerful color correctors. Now let's talk about actually two of them. That's why we set up aux three also. And you can see if I go and recall on aux one my parameters, I'm gonna to go to aux three in this second monitor. It's my regular still. I haven't adjusted the monitor or the uh, parameters for aux three yet. Um, so let's talk about how the best way to do that. Do I wanna go through the same process in aux three um, down here on color corrector? and maybe write in the values and, and adjust them manually, I could do that. But I also can do things like copy and copy and link and link these two together. So if I have the same source going to two different monitors, I can actually set parameters and adjust one thing and link the two together. So let's talk about that for a minute. We're gonna set up our links. We're gonna go to ENG setup, switcher, link, aux bus color corrector link. And I want to put in, in a link group, there's 12 link groups, but I'm going to say aux one is in link group one and aux three, you're also in link group one. I could have aux four, five, and six feeding other monitors on another set in my facility and have those in link group two. We're going to stay with link group one. Now when I go back to my aux color corrector, you can see aux one and three are in a link group. You can see that aux one, I have video processing on and primary color corrector on. Now, if I wanted to get these adjusted as quickly as possible, I could do a copy in link. And it just copied the parameters to aux three, and we're in aux one. So if I go back and turn these on, I'm going to have the same parameters. Turn these on, and go up to aux one, turn these back on. Now also that they're linked, if I have to change my parameters, right, I can do it together. So it's happening to both. So you can see this is aux one, this is aux three, and I can adjust the parameters of both. Again, send that back to Unity, go to my primary, blacks, and adjust those reds and blues together. And I'm adjusting two switcher outputs, two aux feeds, going to two separate monitors, but I'm adjusting them together. And video ops would love this. Tie the things they need to tie together with different video feeds and go. And again, user five is also controlling aux three. So it's very easy for me to come down as the TD and save a snapshot in, aux in user five that is 22, and now I've saved it for both. So again, if I were to turn off link enable and color corrector on three and one and get back to my normal, I can easily recall a snapshot that then sets up both monitors and both auxes. So that's some of the power of the aux and output menu together and having aux outputs going out with the color corrector, all part of the XVS switcher.